Hi guys, uh, I'm very happy to be joined by Tony Christie, who is a spiritual healer who specialises in labyrinths. So Tony, first of all, what, what is a labyrinth? Um, a labyrinth is a very ancient symbol. It's um, over 5,000 years old. The oldest known ones of them are found on rock carvings, but it has been found in many different um, situations and societies and civilizations down through the last 5,000 years. Mm. So today it's increasing in popularity as people are using large labyrinths to walk as a walking meditation. Oh, they find it quietens the mind and uh, they feel more centered and balanced and then they can use it to explore their journey in life. It's also used for healing, is that right? Well? Yes, yeah, I have been using the labyrinth for healing individually with people and people oftentimes they will find that they he have a healing or a release from some emotional issues even when they're walking it themselves mm. but when you use it with the intention of working individually with people its healing abilities become through more stronger and more powerfully awesome yeah. so what uh, first drew you to the labyrinth first my yeah, first, yeah, use first experience um first experience was my wife Fanula had a deck of angel cards mm. and she um asked me to pick one as one does and it was the card I picked was called Melchizedek's Labyrinth, and it had this pattern on it. And that's the guy in the photo as well. Yes, it? this is a, an image of Melchizedek. I mean, he's, he's a personality from the book of Genesis, the first book in the Old Testament, so there are no photographs or images of him, you know. <laughs> but this is the labyrinth, and this is an image of his energy, is how I would put it, you know, yeah. by a Danish artist, um, Peter Fish Christiansen. So, and this for me portrays the energy that is coming through from Melchizedek. He, for me, holds the consciousness of humanity mm. and so is overseeing our progress and our development and, right. and his energy, his healing and his healing energies are coming through many people all over the world at this time. And you can use the labyrinth to access this energy in a way. Yes, yeah. yeah. This is called Melchizedek's labyrinth because when you trace the path of this or walk it, uh, Melchizedek is often shown holding a cup, sometimes the bread and wine, and in certain mm. situations he's just holding the cup, which I see as the cup of consciousness of humanity. Mm. And this creates a cup of your energy bodies when you travel through. So it's, it's and then the cup or the symbol of the cup is that it has a, a base like a chalice so that your, grounds you. And then there's the, the node in the middle, which is your heart, which is the connection between the earth and heaven. Mm. And then there's a kind of a cup type shape on top of that, so bring in the divine energy, but you need to be grounded first. You need to be grounded. Yeah. So labyrinth, so it's like a kind of a bridge between heaven and earth. Right? It's exactly what it is. Yeah. Not only is the labyrinth a bridge between heaven and earth, but you are a bridge, so we are bridges between <laughs> heaven and earth. Um, except maybe we don't realise that or feel like that sometimes, but yeah. the more we travel on our individual paths of personal growth and spiritual growth, then we become more um, aware of how we are connected and how we came to earth as spiritual beings at this time in physical bodies mm. and we need to be connected here to the earth, we need to be grounded to the earth to do the work that we came here to do, whatever that is. Definitely. Mm. I mean, you can see the life journey is like walking through a labyrinth, isn't it? Because we come through <laughs> we, so many crossroads and points where we think we should do this, we should do that. Yes. So labyrinth is almost like saying like you're, you're in this labyrinth, like it's time to be balanced and just trust yourself that you're going to get to find the end, right? Yes, uh, and labyrinth sometimes is called a symbol of your journey in life because there is only one path from the outside to the center. Mm. And so it's, it's the, the only question you have to answer is if you're going to enter it or not, or the only choice you have to make. And once you enter, it's a twisting winding path. So even though the center can represent many different things for different people, it generally represents what you're seeking in life mm. or what you're bringing to other people in your life. But the journey to the center, it's a twisting, winding path. And sometimes mm. it takes a turn and you feel like you're further away from the center, just like some event will happen in your life that may or may not be the most pleasant or you can't mm. understand or you think something like this is happening to you at that time. And that's like represented by one of the turns in the labyrinth that appears to take you from the center. But everything in life happens for a reason and everything in life happens for us. So there's a learning in it if we can see it and if we're aware enough to see it. If you keep moving and to keep taking the next step, well then you, your life will take another turn, just as the labyrinth take another turns, and you come closer to the center. So it's it's a series of turns mm. and events that appear to be taking you away and towards your center, but in fact they're all taking you towards no, the center if you're aware enough to see that. 
And for me, the labyrinth is one of the greatest tools I have met for heightening your awareness and bringing about that state of seeing more how every event in your life is happening for you and for your learning rather than just happening to you. To, yeah. yeah. I remember that quote in the book, so I yeah. enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I like that one, yeah. Um, a lot of people associate the labyrinth with that story about Theseus and the Minotaur. Yes. Is that almost, can we see that as like a, a metaphor for us facing our own shadow, really? Yes. Yeah, I mean, any, any tale of, you know, mythology, any mythological tale, you can see, See it or interpret it at many different levels depending on, on how you interpret it or maybe where you're coming from yourself. So it can be just a factual story mm. or it can be that you would see yourself in one of the personalities, one of the characters in the story. So Theus and the, the Minotaur, for, for people just to give a very brief um, synopsis of it, of it really, the Minotaur was a creature with the head of a bull and the body of a man that ate human flesh in Greek mythology and was kept in a labyrinth so it couldn't escape um, on the island of Crete. Yeah. And because the Greeks owed a tribute to the Cretans, they had to send seven young men and seven young women every nine years as a sacrifice to the Minotaur. And the second time this was to happen, Theseus decided he would go and kill the Minotaur. And so he found the, the Minotaur and killed it. Mm. Um, but that whole journey or that search, it's an it's, it's archetypal hero's journey mm. where he or I, any of us are facing one of our fears yeah. and we, we have to decide that we're going to do it. Mm. Now for me the, the nicest story of Thesis and the Minotaur is when he found the Minotaur, the Minotaur actually bowed down and allowed said to be killed, that it was actually the, the whole challenge was actually facing the fear mm. and then once you decide to face your fears, the fears will often subside. Mm. You know, that if you decide, I'm going to do this, so oftentimes it doesn't turn out as fearful yeah, as, as you might think. think. Yeah. And then Jung will have said that the Minotaur um, represents our shadow side, which is that part of ourselves that we keep hidden for fear it will devour us. And it may be something we're not proud of or ashamed of or mm. something that we think we're not very good at that we just don't want to share with people. And it doesn't mean that you have to share it, it just means that you to, to you need to acknowledge it and embrace it to become whole. It's, that's, that's a good way to, of putting it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my interpretation on one yeah. level of Theseus and the Minotaur. Definitely. Yeah. Right, so um, we're going to have a session today. Yes, yes. Um, <coughs> I call it um, Melchizedek Labyrinth Healing, it's, and this is the first part of it, which is involves tracing the path of the labyrinth with your finger. Mm. Every part of the labyrinth represents some aspect of you or your life. And because the labyrinth has this uh, wonderful healing energy, um, you will be pausing at different times to allow either rebalancing of your chakras, your energy centers, because there are seven circuits in this labyrinth and, this, and each chakras, one represents yeah. Yeah, one of your chakras. And there are many different layers. Um, depending on where you stop, I'll interpret them for you. But to know where you stop, I tune into spirit and to tune into your energy field with the divining rod, mm -hmm. a dowsing rod, depending on. And it normally is straight, but once when it moves, it's indicating to you that you must stop. Okay. And this, it can the stop can take two seconds or two minutes. The, I don't decide how long it takes. And sometimes on the path in, you might stop five times or ten times or twenty times. There's no. It's different for everybody because the labyrinth meets everybody where they're at. So. Moving already. <laughs> Sometimes it's, just, energy it's tuning, start, it's tuning yeah, in. Yeah. Now I always ask for permission before when I start dowsing or divining. There are three questions: Can I? May I? Should I? Of spirit. And can I is is and my yes goes this way, but it, a no goes that way. So can I do this? Which is a yes. May I do this? Is have a permission? So I say yes. And should I do this? Is it appropriate at this time? And there we go. <laughs> so and you may see me jumping. Sometimes I just. Get, you literally get, feel the uh, jolt of the energy. Yeah, I get a blast of energy. Yeah, um, it it stops me from falling asleep. I think you know, it's the boys upstairs <laughs> just saying, "Come on, Tony, you know, don't miss this one." <laughs> <laughs> so if you just need to put your finger here, yeah, on the labyrinth, and you trace it, kind of steadily, not too fast and not too slow, okay. and I will tell you to see you stop when I tell you to stop. What would you suggest to people who just start, start learning about labyrinths? Like, 
maybe do one of these like once a month or like yeah you can like, you know you can either download or even a paper one you know mm. or you can the learn tube how station to draw one or, yourself yeah. yeah there are yeah well there are labyrinths and tube stations um, yeah. certainly when I worked in an office even at times and people would come to me and say they're feeling a bit stressed or whatever I'd actually I used to have a, a few printed <laughs> labyrinths in, in, in my drawer and say here go and trace that there two or three times and see how you're feeling <laughs> It's a de-stressing tool, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely is. Yeah, it just takes you out of your head, really. That's the, the main thing I find about it. It really yeah. just gets yeah. you here in the present. Yeah. Um, yes, and the, the practice of as you're doing, even just focusing on moving your finger through a little groove on a on mm -hmm. a plaque. It's the same. It's the same when you're walking a labyrinth and you're focusing on the narrow path the lines that. The left side, the masculine, logical, rational thinking side, which is very active in today's world because mm. we're just being bombarded with things to do and we've listed things to do. And we're always, you know, advertising and the mobile phone, and it's, yeah. it's very active. And the labyrinth allows it by forcing it to focus on the narrow path or a groove mm. that your fingers moving through. It actually quietens the mind, quietens the left side of the mind, and then allows the feminine, the right side, creative, receptive, intuitive side mm -hmm. to come into balance with that and it brings you into a whole brain state where um, both sides of the brain are working together, whole brain. And so the labyrinth is sometimes one of the sort of most common ways that people who walk labyrinths, they will, if they're looking for if a question or they're looking for answers, they're looking for insights into an issue in their life, mm -hmm. they will just hold that question or that issue in their mind and start walking because the thinking side that hasn't been able to solve it for them quietens and that mm. intuitive receptive creative side comes into balance and opens up more people will often get insights into whatever that issue is or even find answers to their questions you know? yeah so. you're, you're cooped I say they. <laughs> wow how are you doing yeah good <laughs> feels like stuff shifted like uh I don't know. <laughs> yeah, feel a bit. It's hard now. to describe. I mean, it can take a little while to process. It's, yeah, it's the all effects bit, of that. It's like you have to right. kind of get used to, like you get a new pair of shoes or something. You have to get mm. used to walking in that are carrying the new energy that stuff has been released, new stuff has come in. You know, so mm. um, if you were going straight out into a busy street or environment, I would be saying try and sit quietly somewhere for half an hour, maybe before you do that. You mm. know, just to allow it to settle. Have you any? questions about what happened. <laughs> I know we spoke <laughs> we through it, you know, which yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, what sort of things can I expect today? Like, can I just... Um, I, generally, if, if you become a little bit more aware, you know, mm. so before, if you just walked down the street, you didn't notice the sign in the shop window, or you mm. didn't know a little child walking and coming towards you, or, you know, the people... I find that after working like this with the labyrinth, my awareness becomes heightened. And ultimately what it's doing is it's bringing each one of us individually and then collectively to a higher state of awareness. Yeah. Thank you very much, Wonderful. Tony, for joining, joining yeah. us today. Yeah. Um, you have a website as well, people can check I out. I have a website, it's tonymchristie.com, so T-O-N-Y with a, an M, and C-H-R-I-S-T dot com, and I will post, a, you know, generally post some messages or cards or some of my artwork almost every day on Instagram or Facebook, yeah. you can find me, please welcome to follow me and um, get in touch if you've... Yeah. yeah, if you feel that we have some connection. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if it resonates with you guys, yeah, please do check out Labyrinths and yeah, please look into Tony Christie's work. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, Mark. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>